All right, y'all, what's happening? Um, um, before we jump into this video, please make sure that you've uh, uh, watched the other video in the link below. That's just basically my last video that I've uh, produced about um, me defending Sorian. Now, this is a follow-up because it seems that some people are not very clear about uh, what was actually being brought to the attention. Now, I don't know if this has anything to do with uh, the fact that uh, the people or person, whoever here, have not actually watched it to the end or listened to the points uh, that were being brought up. But I'm just gonna uh, give them a benefit of the doubt and take it at the face value saying that they probably didn't quite understand the argument. So I'm just gonna make my argument a bit more clear and uh, perhaps uh, invite them to have a conversation at the end of it all. But we'll get to that in a moment. So let's get into what is just seeing what they've said. So this guy, Derpy Duck. So uh, I see the only ones well, there's yeah, two responses straight away that follow. So first one goes like this. I have problems with both the subject of the video and the person narrating. And then it goes on to say this. I find it funny how he used refuted the argument of T-Rex had feathers because of phylogenetic bracketing, but also uses phylogenetic bracketing as evidence T-Rex had no lips. Oh. Okay, first of all, dude, um... I had a bit of a hard time trying to read your sentence there because uh, maybe you should put the, you know, full stops or whatever in between your sentences, just saying. But anyway, uh, just uh, want to say, okay, so these are basically the, his arguments. So he thinks, clearly thinks, and he's under the impression that my, uh, that I'm being biased towards, obviously, the whole idea that uh, there should be no phylogenetic bracketing applied when it comes to feathers, but uh, we can apply it in terms of lips. Now, there is a reason um, for that and why I specifically uh, use that. Uh, that, And uh, I think all of you who are my regular subscribers and viewers will know exactly why we consider this as granted because we've been mulling this over zillion, bazillion times. But this guy doesn't get it, so let's explain it to him. Now, uh, Derpy Duck, here's the thing, all right, man? Here's the thing. Um, you see, uh, phylogenetic bracketing only um, works and is applied as a, a way to organize taxa based on their relationship. And... Uh, if we are going to use this to reconstruct something like a T-Rex integument, we go but what we know from the closest available evidence, right? What's the closest available evidence to T-Rex aside from T-Rex itself, which also showed us scaly integument? Oh, that's right, other Tyrannosaurids. That's why phylogenetic bracketing would not imply that the closest relationship that, they sh that should be used for reconstruction is Eutyrannus Huali. It should be something a bit in a closer relationship. Now, if you've done your research and if you've studied, you know, all the relevant information in terms of their relationship and the gap of the, you know, periods between them, as in between Proceratosaurids and Basal Tyrannosauroidea versus the later period Tyrannosaurida. Now, it's not parsimonious to, say, to argue that you should use Eutyrannus Huali, Guanlong, and etc. Dilong for reconstructing T-Rexes and Tyrannosaurida with feathers or filaments rather than just use the actual evidence that you have at hand of the closest relatives. All of them show scales, and yes, there is quite a large amount of evidence out there. Definitely good enough to already say that if every time we're finding something related to their skin integument and all it shows is scales, not a single trace of filaments, then we're getting scales, not filaments. And until we have anything else prove otherwise, we use that as an null hypothesis. That is why I do not use phylogenetic bracketing to imply feathers. Phylogenetic bracketing would imply scales, not feathers. That's just to answer that part of the argument. If you want to talk about it more, feel free to talk to me later. But I will give you more details on that part at the end of the video. Let's just get on with your arguments here, shall we? And as for lips, yes, well, exactly, because the closest relatives 
that are alive to reconstruct the snouts of tissue are crocodilians and birds. Lizards are not closely related, related, you know, animals to dinosaurs. So phylogenetic bracketing would not work in favor of lips, considering that crocs and birds don't have lips, and that all the evidence that we have found shows that they had similar type of facial integument like crocodilians. That is their toothed relatives, closest toothed relatives alive. So there you go. That's how phylogenetic bracketing works here. And that's where I use my argument. Now let's go to the next one. There's probably some more. Oh yeah, so... Uh, and then, uh, uh, yeah, he goes on to this one here. It says... This video is an example of awesome bros versus feather Nazis. Both the subject and the narrator show the same faults and their own biases. Well, um, this is interesting. Um, this is very interesting, you should say that. So, uh, who exactly is, the no is, is an awesome bro here? I, I, I don't understand. And how are my fa where Which faults are mine here? And uh, which... What does indicate... What indicates bias? I just don't understand it. Like, uh, I really think you need to provide a bit more context here, my main. Because it might fly in your circles over here, among the likes of those guys here where, where you chat, but this is not gonna fly in my circles, you see where I hang out, so <laughs> you're gonna have to do better than this. So, if you care enough, do provide some arguments or else, uh, well, it's gonna be taken at, as it is, basically, just mumbling and rumbling. So, yeah, nothing else to see here. Uh, that theory never sat well with me, you think they would have realized it's just a broken piece. Okay, never mind, uh, that's a different subject here. Now we said to avoid this discussion, I just want to add, trying to stick hard with one view as a fully feathered of a dinosaur is just as bad as trying to stick with the other. other. There's no good and bad here, you see, that's the problem. You are treating it like it's uh, black and white, it's not. The thing is, um, you stick with what is actually called a null hypothesis, because there's only one of them that's correct, you cannot have both. You cannot have both answers and be correct about it. One of them is correct and one of them is not, and the point is to eliminate the incorrect, and the most correct one is the one that has the most empirical evidence supporting it. Until, of course, we find something that is going to definitely, you know, resolve this debate once and for all. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, we stick with the one that stands up to most scrutiny, and that can stand up to the best, you know, of criticism out there. And the feathered Tyrannosaurids just don't stand up to criticism. They fail when you start criticizing and taking it apart. Scaly Tyrannosaurids, however, they do stand very well against criticism. So, there is that. And, uh, let's see what else. Prehistoric animals, I'm amazed how far some people go. I don't know about that. I don't know what he means in here. I don't really know what he... I don't know what you're talking about here, personally. Like, again, too vague. No context. How am I supposed to understand what's going on? Anyway. Right. <laughs> now, uh... Here you said, uh, yeah, you have problems with the subject of the video and the person. So what are your problems exactly with me, because I'm the one obviously narrating it, and uh, the subject of the video? What, what are the problems? Can you explain what the problems are? Other than what you have said here. Because this is what you said you had a problem with. Okay, fair enough, I can trace this part. This says, this is the argument, yeah, that you said you had a problem with, my argument. So what is the problem with me exactly? Can you tell me about that, maybe? I'm curious to hear what your problems are with me. So, with that in mind, I tell you what, um, my dear subscribers, uh, post your comments down below and let me know when are you most available uh, throughout next week. Like, my best days to do these kind of things are usually Wednesdays and Thursdays. So... I don't know about the time yet, but uh, let's say either of those days next week, and I will definitely post an update once I know for sure. Uh, let's do a live stream, and let's talk about this. 
And you, Derpy Duck, by the way, are welcome to come along and have a discussion with me about that. And you can tell me directly via live stream. That is my live stream on my channel. What are the real problems that you have with my video, which I don't mind at all discussing. If you have a problem, dis let's discuss it. And uh, exactly what are the problems that you had with me? Because I was the narrator, so you said you had it with, with the person narrating. Therefore, me, right? <laughs> so, what problems do you have with me? So, what, so, come by over there and let's discuss it. I don't want this to be buried in comment section somewhere under the videos. I actually want people to be able to see these conversations because I think they are important conversations to be had. And I'm open to them. I definitely am. So, and let's just see what, what happens. If you're on the right side of things, then chances are I might learn quite a lot from you. In which case, kudos to you. If it's the other way around, then I hope you would have it in you to basically admit to where you were wrong and learn something from that too. It's a mutually beneficial experience. So, I definitely say you have quite a bit of time. You have about a week or so to think about it. So, think about it. And maybe get some of your friends in as well if you want. And uh, let's just have a chat. Let's just have a, a chat. I mean, we we should really be more inviting to have conversations rather than alienating. Because, you know, as much as I criticize and disagree and uh, rant a lot about these topics, there is one topic here that unites us all, and that's the, our love and interest in dinosaurs and paleontology. So I think maybe the solution is not to alienate, maybe the solution is to come together and actually discuss it. I'm just putting it out there on the table. I'm open for it. I think my subscribers will also agree and appreciate that as well and will be happy to participate and I'm sure you would you would be happy to participate if you definitely were you know if you have something to say because I'm I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt here okay so definitely think about it you got about a week and uh, if you are interested then by all means show up on my live stream and let's have a look. Just make sure you introduce yourself so I know who you are. And uh, let's talk about this. Let's discuss it. All right. In any case, I hope I made my points very clear. I hope uh, that at least if you have any more questions about how that argument there went on, I made it very clear. And uh, if you don't understand it still, then I can explain it to you down in the comments below. But uh, yeah, I mean, that about does it basically. So, I guess I gotta get back to work. Thanks very much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. And until later.